Hi, this is Pre-Calculus Notes, Section 9.5, Binomial Theorem. Now, what we want to do is a warm-up, though, to start off, and so we're going to try to use mathematical induction to prove something in a little bit different way than what we have before. This is without sequences and series, and so, but we set up a lot of it the same, so we check the n equal to 1 case. And with this n equal to 1 case, ln x to the first power is equal to 1 times ln x. Check. So we figured that one works. And so we got to figure out for the next case, we got to figure out for the n plus 1 case what happens from there. So with n plus 1, we try to write this out. So I have ln x to the n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 ln x. And really what we're trying to do here is to show that this is correct. So I put a little question mark up there. Is this equal or not? And so when we do this, I can't just use our original formula to take this n plus 1 out in front. Uh, otherwise that would trivialize what we're doing here. So what we need to do is maybe simplify this somewhat to write it out. So if I take ln x, this right here is a power with a uh, exponent that's added together, which means that it's the same thing as if I multiply the bases, which are the same, and so then I can add exponents. So this is equivalent to what I have up here. And so this is equal to n plus 1 ln x. I'm still questioning this. Now if I look at what happens here, I can rewrite this as a sum of the logarithm. Log of the product is equal to the sum of the logs. I guess I don't have to keep on writing this right side, but I have been. And then if I uh, look at this situation now, and I said before I couldn't use this rule, but now I can, because this is identical to what we have here. It doesn't deal with the n plus one case. So I can use this rule to plug this in here. And now if you look at this, I, can, I have a ln x and a ln x. They're in common, so I can factor that out. And when I factor that out, I'm going to be left with the n and the 1 from here. So there you go. So this is how you could prove with mathematical induction. Okay. So here I couldn't use the rule directly, but here I could because it is stated here and given to us as that fact. Okay, uh, why don't you try these and expand both of these, or all three of these, or a couple of them, and then I'll write them out. So pause. So is there a pattern with the coefficients? Sure there is. Pascal's triangle. And if I continued this on, it would still follow this. This is Pascal's triangle. What I do is I take the sum of these two numbers and write it here. And so to get the next column, I start with a 1, and then I take the 2 above it and add them together. Two above it, add them together, and then finish with a 1. And then I get 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. You can Google Pascal's triangle. They'll give you many, many layers of that. Now, uh, try these with your calculator or by hand and see what values you get when you plug these things together and figure these things out. So go ahead and pause and try that, and then I'll write them out. So, ah, this is a different way to generate this fourth row of Pascal's triangle. And so if my exponent is ever 4, what I can do is I can use uh, these little factorials instead of writing all the way out. So if I have the 15th row, I would not have to write this all the way out to the 15th row. I could use these formulas in this pattern to put this together. Now, what is that pattern? Well, that pattern is based on this. x plus y to the nth is equal to x to the n. And then the first term, I should say the second term here, has a coefficient of n, and so on. And then if we take any general term, we can use what we call choose notation. Now, choose notation is what we just saw above, but I had calculated it out into these formats. And so choose notation, we have ncr. Now, this is how they write on the calculator. I think this is more modern-day notation. This is how I learned it originally. 
but then you do n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Okay? The other way to say is n choose r. So if I look at this, I get eight, uh, 9 choose 2. So if I write this one out, it'd be 9 factorial over 9 minus 2, which is 7 factorial, 2 factorial. And if I simplify that, this numerator just becomes 9 times 8. If I cancel off the 7 factorial on down, and then the, I'm left with a 2, because 2 factorial is 2. 72 divided by 2 is 36. Try this one. 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. Write that one out and simplify it, and I believe that you get 210. This one, 15 choose 0, 15 factorial all over 0 factorial, um, well, I should write 15 factorial first, 0 factorial second. 0 factorial is not 0. 0 factorial is always equal to 1. And so this will just cancel, so I'm left with 1. And what do you think happens with this one? This one will be a similar type situation. You just end up with 1. So expand the binomials. So you can use the uh, Pascal's triangle to do this, or you can use this formula. Right now, I would just use Pascal's triangle because this is 1, 3, 3, 1. Notice that if it's to the third power, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So when I do this, I get a r value. r is equal to actually 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, and 3 here. Even though this is my first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So what happens is that if I ask you what's the third term, you would have to take r back by 1 from the number of term. OK? So with this one, well, I can use this choose notation like I said, but I know the pattern, x cubed. And I hope you looked at some of the previous ones for the pattern. And then this would be take the x down by 1, y up by 1, x down by 1, y up by 1, and then we get y cubed. OK? Uh, these are the r values. Hopefully, these aren't getting in your way. So take those out. OK? Now, if I look at this one right here, now I have 2a, negative 3b. So what's going to happen is that my r's are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's five terms. And so if I do my first term, my first term normally would be 1x to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 6 x squared, y squared, plus 4 xy cubed, and then plus y to the fourth. Now, I don't have x and y anymore. I, I have x is the same thing as 2a, and y is equal to, don't forget the negative, negative 3b. So if I put these things in now, this would be 2a to the fourth, plus 4, 2a to the third, and I'm going to pause this, and I'm just going to write this out for you. So you can copy this down, but now I multiply. This 2 is to the 4th, so it's 16a to the 4th. Plus, I got this 4, I got 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. 32 times negative 3. Oh, this is negative. Negative 96a cubed b. Plus 6, this is times 4, 24, times 9. I think we get 216. a squared, b squared. Plus... Here, 3 is, uh, to the 3rd is 27, times 8, I get 216 as well. A, and then this is B cubed. But notice, this is a negative to the 3rd, so I get another negative. And then this is a negative to the 4th, so this would be 81 B to the 4th. Notice what happens when one of these terms is negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. It's going to be alternating just because of the nature of the odd and even exponents. So this is what would happen if I expanded this out. Write it out in x's and y's first, and then plug them in and simplify. OK. Then if I look at these, these are in simplified form a little bit. 
So here's an example of where it says third term, but I have to take r back by 1. So r is going to be equal to 2. Now instead of writing out the ninth row of Pascal's triangle, I'm going to use the choose notation. So it's 9 choose 2. And then I'm going to take my x and raise it to the, not the second power, but this is going to be the seventh power, and y to the 2. So this will always be the same as this. These two values will always add up to this 9. So look for those patterns and make sure that things turn out correctly. If you do 9 choose 2, I believe it's 36. x to the 7th, y squared. I'm going to do number 3 for you, and then you can go back and do number 2, and I'll show you the answer. So this one now says that I got the 8th term. Remember, 8th term means that r is equal to 7. So I'm going to have, and my n here is equal to 10. That's the exponent. So I'm going to go 10, choose 7, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do x and y first. So this would be x to the, what power would that be? Well, that's 3. y would be my 7. That matches up. Those exponents add up to this one. Voila. Now, instead of x and y, I'm going to plug in the other items there. So this is c7. 2a to the third times negative 3b to the seventh. And if you do this one, this turns out to be a very big number. I'm going to write it down for you. Please check with your calculator that this is what you are getting when you do this out. Um, try that and do that. Now, one thing is, though, is that with your calculator, how do you find this with your calculator? So what we do is we can go to math. And before I do math, what I have to have is um, I want to put in my first number. So I need to put in my 10. Then I'm going to go to math, and I'm going to slide over to PRB. And there's my th number 3. So this 10 goes in for the n. And then now my number that I'm going to put in here will go in for the r. So 10 choose 7, that would be 120. Then I got times 2 raised to the third, and then times 3 raised to the seventh, and I get that number. I apply the negative because this negative is being raised to the seventh there. Okay, so that's how you can find it on your calculator. Math, slide over to PRB, and you should be able to find it. Go ahead and try this one. Pause this, and I'll write down the answer for you. So there's that answer. Okay. If you need to see how that's worked out, I can show that to you as well. But you should pause this one off, and this is how you work it out. Okay. Moving on. If we take this next one, number four, in that doesn't say ln, but it says in this right here, I want to find the coefficient of a three b six. Now with this, I look at a three b six. And when I look at this, I see this 6. That tells me straight away that r is equal to 6. Oh, that helps me out a bunch. And then if I add these together, I get to the ninth power, as long as there's no exponents inside here. So this would be c. And then I said 9. And then the r is 6. And then I'm going to have my 3a raised to the third power. And then I'm going to have my b, which is negative, raised to the 6th power. OK, and if you simplify that, I'm just going to show you here again. We're going to end up with this right here. OK, so crank that out and see if you can get that. Since the negative is raised to the 6, it's all going to turn out all right. OK, then the last two problems, well, with these, I, I say six children. With six children, it's really hard to write them out. But if it said three children, let me, let me go off to the side here a little bit. If I had three children in a family, how many different possible ways can we have boys and girls? So if I write out one option, it would be boy, boy, girl in that order. Then I could have boy, girl, boy. Then I could have boy, girl, girl. And then I could have boy, boy, girl. Then I can replicate that for having a girl first. So this would be girl, girl, girl. 
and so on. These are all the possible ways that I can write this out. So total, there's eight different ways. And so if I ask you, what's the probability that all three are boys? Well, how many of these different eight ways do I get all boys? Well, there it is right there. One out of eight. This would be all boys. If I say I got one girl, well, this one has one girl. This one has one girl. And there must be another one. There, there's three of them. So one girl would be three out of eight, three out of the total. So you have to look at these things and count them out. However, if I'm gonna have six children, I don't wanna write all these, I don't wanna write them all out. But if you notice, I said I get one, then I get three that have one girl, three that have one boy, and then there's one with all the boys, I mean, so, I'm sorry, all girls. Look at this again, this is Pascal's triangle. So if I do this with six children, I can do a binomial expansion. And so here's my binomial, b plus g, and I'm gonna raise it to the sixth power, okay? So if I go to the sixth row of Pascal's triangle, I get these numbers right here, or else I could go six choose zero, six choose one, six choose two, six choose three, choose four, choose five, choose six, and I would still get those same values either way. Figure out what works easiest for you. Now, if I go back to this problem, if I expand this all out, I get all this. Now, these are the values or the ways that I can write out, for instance, this term right here, it's a way that I can write out five boys and one girl. There's six different ways to do that. How many ways can I write out four boys and two girls? Well, there's 15 ways to do that. And that's what this question's asking, four boys and two girls. Well, that's 15 out of the total. So if I want the probability, I gotta go part to whole. Well, the total, if you add all these things up, would be 64. One plus six plus 15 plus 20 and so on, 64. So this is the probability that you would have four boys and two girls. Now for this one, it says, give us a probability distribution. So how you do a probability distribution is that if I put, for instance, number of boys, the number of boys that you could have are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the probability that you have 0 boys, well that would be this one right here, 1, and if I do a probability, it's out of 64. Then I get 6 out of 64, 15, 20, and so on. And how many ways can you get six boys? That would be this one. This would be one out of 64. So if I add all these up on the numerator, I should get 64. So the total of my sample space should be one, which is 64 over 64, and that's correct. So a distribution just shows all the different possibilities written out, okay? So that's how you could do a probability with this, and later on we'll get into uh, some more specifics with the binomial probabilities and based on this situation. So why don't you complete a summary of a couple of the items that you've learned here, and make sure that you remember that R is one less than the term number that we're dealing with. N is usually the same number as um, the row that we're in. I call it the sixth row, maybe you would call it something different, I don't know, but this is the sixth row here. Okay, here's the homework. Thank you very much, I hope you enjoyed this.